uh, from Newcastle. And he will talk about irreversibility in a driven dissipative optomechanical system. So now we make the change to quantum thermodynamics, I guess. Hello, Eric. Hi, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, and the slide is okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> and then uh, thank the organizers uh, yeah, for inviting me to give this talk at this uh, workshop. And then uh, just to put uh, also contest as um, yeah, Edgar uh, requested. Yeah, I am a former, I would say, ICTP diploma students, and uh, they are originally from Nigeria. And I did diploma program yeah, over 10 years ago now. And afterwards, yeah, I proceed doing some masters in nanoscience, which took me yeah, to universities, Chalmers University in Sweden, and then um, also Delft University in Netherlands. And I did my PhD in Germany with Eric Lutz, yeah, where I stayed, I started in Augsburg, yeah, but uh, completed it in University of Erlangen. So that's uh, me, and then uh, this is just uh, basically also to motivate the students in the audience, and then also the diploma students that, yeah, you can actually do it. So if I have been able to do some of this stuff uh, up till now. So the today I will try to talk um, about, yeah, driven dissipative quantum system, which in which you have uh, some reservoir attached to it. And this idea of this uh, is uh, important as we have been hearing yeah, over this uh, workshop, classical system, and then also biological system, there's always this irreversible protocol and the understanding them is basically a fundamental problem in physics. So today's outline of the talk will proceed as follow. First, I will give a, just a brief uh, maybe introduction. Why do we have to care about irreversibility and how to quantify it? And then the second part would be try to give a concrete uh, model and just go a bit through how one can actually quantify this parameter for an optomechanical system which contain a nonlinear non medium. So, and the third part would be basically when you extend this to more condensed matter like kind of system, the magno mechanical cavity, which is becoming quite uh, a area of research moment due to promises it offer in quantum information and all that. And I will conclude by giving some outlook. So first, uh, Whenever you think about irreversibility, these are usually computed by the entropy production in thermodynamics, and we no need uh, going into this as uh, I think we have had a lot talk um, associated with this. But if we think just a thermo thermodynamic process, and the second law according to Calcius is that you are changing entropy is given by this uh, inequality uh, in which you have the change in heat upon the temperature. And the entropy production is basically defined as the difference between these two and is equal to zero for reversible process and is always non-negative. But sometimes things are easy to calculate yeah, using the rate, so in time. So if you just look at rate of change of the entropy, in time, that gives you this expression where this first quantity is the entropy production rate. And then the second one is what uh, is known as entropy flux. So under steady state, both of them are the same. So then the next thing that one can ask is why do we here to study this kind yeah, irreversibility, as I already said, is important in biological systems, power plants, 
But if we just think of basic thermodynamic system, you can actually do just a back of envelope calculation yeah, to show that the efficiency the steady state just combining the first law and then the second law that the efficiency is given yeah, by this expression here. And where what this tells us is basically that the entropy production is one of things that yeah, makes us not to be able to achieve kernel efficiency, or perhaps that it puts some yeah, constraints on performance of heat engines. And on the experimental side also, in 2018, it has been realized yeah, or shown that this entropy production yeah, can be measured in a mesoscopic quantum device. And then in that case, they did this in two different kind of set of, one is optomechanical system, and then the other one is a driven dissipative system in which you have a, a BEC in a cavity and then actuated. So the group in um, uh, Zurich did that, and then uh, the group of Nikolai also yeah, did that of the optomechanic with a uh, collaboration of experimental groups of uh, Monroe, Button Astro. So then uh, just to give uh, now more concrete model, then first uh, we look at just say an optical cavity in which is mediated, you have a spring attached, yeah, which can shift the mirror, exciting uh, some form of uh, radiation pressure interaction. And to model this kind of system, first is to look what is the yeah, Hamiltonian of your cavity, and then you have to also yeah, know Hamiltonian of the mechanism associated to the mechanical mode, which is coming from the spring, and then the Hamiltonian of the interaction between the two. So, and then this is also yeah, related to the yeah, zero point mode. And then uh, the coupling here is the radiation pressure like uh, yeah, coupling. So, but if we just uh, move, uh, because this with a uh, adding some just external driving here that you will be able to describe the experiment that was performed by the uh, group of uh, Nikolai in, the, in Vienna. So, but if we now move, uh, maybe consider a situation in which we have not just a driven optical cavity, but this cavity also have a nonlinear crystal so which induces some sort of nonlinearity in the system. So that means that in a addition to just having the external driving Hamiltonia, which is related to the frequency of the laser pump. And then, yeah, this is uh, the strength of the um, laser. And then uh, this parametric amplification, yeah, which aside the crystal, is having a, a squeezed form, and then this results in a, a squeezed cavity. So, sort of to say that this are parametric amplification induces some squeezing in the system, and it has been shown that this actually yeah, enhances cooling and then uh, entanglements and some other properties. So, but here, what we're interested to look at is like how does this modify the entropy production? in an optomechanical system. And to proceed then first, yeah, is to yeah, write the Hamiltonian in a rotating frame is given by yeah, the first uh, yeah, equation here, where the delta naught is just the cavity detuning, which is, uh, and then the omega L is the laser, the, the driving laser and then the mega C is the cavity frequency. And in presence of the environment, then you can basically model this equation of motion and the resulting Langevin equation is given for A and B mode. The A mode is the optical cavity mode and then the B is the mechanical mode. And then the kappa here is just the induced the environmental decay rates and the a gamma is that associated to the mechanical 
uh, resonator. So, and if you linearize the system and then just yeah, take into account or you are interested in the small fluctuation that are on top of the mean field yeah, value, then you can write the linearized dynamics in this form where the effective coupling, yeah, capital G now becomes yeah, of this form two times, yeah, the uh, radiation pressure coupling, and then the F S, which is the mean field, yeah, steady state value of the yeah, system, and then you now have the yeah the nonlinear interaction, yeah, which encompass the pumping of the nanocrystal, and then also the phase angle, and then you can compute your amplitude as well as the phase angle, which will be quite uh, important for the analysis. So if we now introduce some quadratures and then also write the, you can rewrite the mere dynamics in compact form, is where we are the capital uh, uh, the R of T is just the quadrature vectors of the two modes, yeah, the cavity mode and then the mechanical mode. And then the noise vector, which are yeah, described for different input noise. And then the A is just the drift matrix, which will some encompass all the components elements that your system. And then analyzing this equation basically, yeah, tells you all the physics, you know, and then assuming, yeah, that you have a, a two, these two reservoirs or the environments are a different uh, temperature that which results in breaking of the detail balance equation. You can also just look at the non-equilibrium steady state solution using the loop on life equation. And by solving this in the steady state, then you can compute your covariance matrices, and then you, this covariance matrix, we can yeah, quantify different parameter bits, entanglements, and then the entropy production and others. So if we now proceed to look at the entropy production, then just uh, following the yeah, framework put forward by Mauro and uh, Maura Brunelli in 2018. So this is just a yeah, diagonal matrix of the yeah, environment mode. And then if you do the calculation, then for two modes, which is straightforward. So what you get is the expression yeah, for this optical parametric optomechanical system is given by the expression here. And then the first term is associated to the cavity mode, while the second term is associated to the mechanical mode. So the N of B here is just the thermal occupation number of the mechanical mode at a given temperature. And if one look at a a steady state. So if the system is a steady state, yeah, what you get is that basically, yeah, this covariance matrix up here at the is just equals to your denominator, and then you have that the entropy production is zero. So, but uh, if you write the full expression, yeah, which we can do in this case, but uh, sorry, I didn't want to go into that because yes I yeah, show you that because it's just uh, yeah too cumbersome and then uh, you don't get much information maybe out of it but one thing that uh, the parametric uh, amplification does is that even it always gives you entropy production that is greater than the what you will get without the non-linear crystal in the setup. So if we then look at uh, some plots, then the first plot here is uh, yeah, when you 
about the entropy production rates against yeah the effective uh, detuning in the system. So what you see is that as you increases the nonlinearity, then the entropy production increases. So and the, this also even if you the figure D here is when you have many number of photon. So if you have a many number of photon in the system, then you basically increase also the amount of the uh, reversibility you get in the system. And uh, this is controlled by the phase of the, of the parametric pump that you use. So, and you can see that clearly from the figure B and the E here. So if we, we just scan through different phase, you can see that you have some phase which correspond to maximum value of uh, maximum value of entropy production rates. And also if you go have more number of a phonon in the system, you can even have some regime where you are actually below yeah, the what you get for yeah without a non-linear crystal. So in principle, with this one can say yeah, entropy production is modified by the presence of this nonlinear crystal and then by tuning that you can actually mod yeah, know maybe parameter range which will be good for operating either your heat engine or uh, heat uh, rectifier. So the next thing we did also was to look at uh, what happens if we increase maybe the amount of the the k rates so and what you see here is that yeah the more you increase this okay then you can have more range but there is always a value at which it deviates and this yeah correspond to when the the k rates of the cavity is sorry yeah when the decay rates of the cavity is a uh, equal to the square of the amplitude and then uh, multiply by the square of the phase. So in principle, yeah, you can have this modification over a given time, but one should always be, yeah, know that you once you get close to this value, then or these two, parameter becomes comparable, then the system becomes unstable. So then we also look at uh, yeah, the correlations in the system because yeah, so, uh, this system is basically a Gaussian state, so it is easy to compute the mutual information as well as quantum discord, which is good because it can actually yeah, get the correlations beyond what one can get understood from the from the entanglement, and also there is a, a, a some sort of relation, yeah, between the quantum mutual information and then entropy production. So, and the from our analysis, then the first plots on the left is when there is no. Uh, crystal in the medium and what you see is that yeah there is almost uh, one to yeah the blue line is the information and then the red one is the discord so i see there is similar behavior almost uh, one to one mark between mutual information and then and the entropy production so but as we start to yeah in, inject or have some crystals in the medium, then you start to have uh, some deviation and the remarkable part is like close, you yeah, at very small detuning, then you see that while the, the entropy production is going down, then there's some increase 
going on in the information, well, mutual information as well as the Discord. And this is basically, yeah, related to at this point uh, what we felt is uh, where this you have um yeah this breakdown of uh yeah the breakdown uh, in your cavity strength being almost equal to the uh, square modulus of the amplitude of the pump so we further yeah extend this Sorry? Uh, it's now past you know past the 20 minutes so just yep. to let you know yes okay so then we we further look at uh, yeah, a situation okay where we have maybe yeah three different kind of uh, system so this magno mechanical cavity model so just say uh, give you a picture understanding of this is just having phonon, yeah, coupled to the yeah, magnon, and then uh, also the magnon is coupled to photon. And there's some driving excitation of the magnon mode, yeah, which in principle, yeah, you can be tuned it even to go, yeah, to it does not be in a a beam splitter, but some other kind of uh, coupling. And then the third term here is the yeah, coupling between the phonon mode and the magnon. And the, so then the, this is the coupling yeah, between the yeah, between the atom, yeah, the photonic mode, and then the magnon. So, and this is the driving where the last term uh, basically just to take into account the noise components as well as the external driving force yeah we are seeing here in this uh, picture and if we just do the same framework again uh, and then uh, couple our yeah the quantum find the write the equation of motion and solve the quantum langevin equation the only difference here now, instead of having four by four matrix, then we'll be having yeah, six by six matrix, and then solve for the entropy production. You can compute every other system. So then I just show you yeah, the results uh, for the entropy production here. So where we plot this against the effective detuning of the magnum. mode and then what you see here yeah for different uh, coupling so of a uh, photon magnon coupling so the black line is when there is no coupling between the photon and then the magnon and uh, what you see is that as you increases yeah this is for small value of a uh, phonon number and what you see is that as you increases the coupling then you have quite big modification in your in your system and the, the second peak we see here is uh, from the hybridization of the two modes so and you have not only shift in this peak and then you have also like disappearance of the second uh, yeah peak so and uh, if we now also look at for high value of a uh, phonon occupation, which is the figure B here, you see there is large number of uh, them in the system and then your entropy production rates yeah, is high, but the system is almost yeah same, but a bit uh, yeah different because uh, what we are looking at here yeah, this uh, uh, figure B is uh, having a, yeah, is plotted with a point uh, one of the gamma, yeah, the environment decay rates of the atomic uh, cavity, yeah, photon cavity. So then if we look at the C, then we just, what we did is to change the coupling of the cavity mode. And what you see is that there is still, some 
different behavior, but uh, is not the same as we have it when we have a small uh, decay rates of the <clears throat> of the optical mode. And then the D is basically just when we have high number of mode and then also for this same kind of uh, coupling and the other parameters are just within the experimental uh, range. So with that, uh, I come to the conclusion of the talk and uh, what I have tried to show you is that nonlinear cavity, yeah, which basically transcribe as a squeeze cavity modifies entropy production. And secondly, yeah, when you have magnum in your system, this also modify uh, your entropy production rates. And this is uh, will be useful yeah, from what we have seen since uh, looking at this figure that we can go yeah, from region where you have maybe increase to decrease within the same sideband. So it will be useful in using this to study ratification and also modeling quantum heat engines and see how this can, yeah, really can play in enhancing performance in a refrigerator or heat engine. And in nutshell, this study does show you the interplay yeah, between the quantum thermodynamics and then non-equilibrium physics, as well as some quantum information. And if you want to see more, then you can look at the paper already you have it archive LEDC and then hope to put the second part soon. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for the interesting talk. Um, we have a question in the chat already. Um, Shyam Kumar, do you want to ask yourself? If not, I will read it. So why is the Hamiltonian? Okay, you're here. No, okay. Why is the Hamiltonian expressed in a rotating frame and does this validity persist when the coordinate system is altered? Spe specifically, does the entropy production undergo any changes? Yeah, I think uh, there is no, this is just basically for easy calculation, so it doesn't change. So, but yeah, you want to write your equation in more compact form, and then you can be able to write this um, yeah, drift matrix, more compact, and having also good interpretation. But yeah, it doesn't change because the effective uh, detuning that you have, when you check yeah, the range of it with coupling, then you see that it has little effect yeah, to the bare, uh, the the bare detuning of the of the system. Okay, thanks a lot. I hope that clarification helped, I think. Um, so we are a little bit tight on time. So further questions, please keep them in mind for the discussion, discussion section. And let's thank Kobina again for the nice talk. Um, maybe Nicole Junger-Halpan can share her screen already.